fintech fest the global fintech fest this event is organized by fintech convergence council and the payments council of india of the internet mobile association of india without wasting much time let me quickly introduce you to the to our esteemed panel this this workshop this would be a mode of workshop and the title of the discussion is sofia and bulgaria as a fintech destination in the central eastern europe join the moderator mr gencho kerezov deputy mayor of digitalization innovation and economic growth we have with us mr georgi penev director bulgarian fintech organization we have mr ivan vasilev vice chairman the bulgarian startup association we have mr plamen tesov chairman of this of the scale focus broad member at the aibest that is the association for innovation business excellence and services technology we have mr blagovest kirov member of the parliamentary committee on Dig digitalization e governance and information technology national assembly of the republic of bulgaria we have mr professor of fintech and banking sofia university saint clement orshid orshid so without wasting much time let me quickly introduce let me quickly invite mr kerezov to take over the session as he happens to be the moderator over to you mr kerezov thank you so much thank you and thank you to our great host at this uh, great event and for the opportunity and the pleasure to host this event it is really uh, wonderful to be able to present the rapid developments of bulgaria and sofia as a fintech innovative uh, destination as deputy mayor for digitalization innovation and economic development of sofia which is the 14th largest city in europe it's really a privilege to moderate this panel as sofia is the first city in bulgaria to have its own department dedicated to these topics it's a good practice on a national level uh, the recently created parliamentary committee on digitalization as well so you can see that bulgaria overall is really focused on the topics of technologies digitalization fintech and introducing to technology overall in all the spheres of uh, of governance bulgaria and sofia are boasting a strong uh, ict and tech industry with a very very special focus on deep tech sector with a focus on fintech biotech creative ai robotics and this the conditions are very advan advantageous and favorable for highly skilled and educated people as well as high quality of life Bulgaria is one of the fastest growing fintech hubs in Central and Eastern Europe and the fintech sector is really a great contribution now to the economic to our economy and to the constant growth of our economy. Bulgaria is actually one of the fastest growing economies in Europe overall. We have a very strong tradition in IT and innovation and entrepreneurship here and we have experienced really a rapid growth establishing themselves as as, as leaders of innovation create different solutions for worldwide markets in Europe and uh, east and west all over the world our dialogue internally on local and international level is a key element of the development of the sustainable economy and the ecosystem in bulgaria sofia has had a strong and diverse ecosystem with over 130 fintech startups over 100 supporting organizations associations clusters universities ngos trade chambers etc and some of them will be represented today by our esteemed panelists it's really a pleasure to start and kick off the discussion with uh, georgi penev today who is the di director of the bulgarian fintech organization georgi would you care to give an overview of what what is the status currently in sofia in, in bulgaria as uh, the fintech sector is concerned Yes of course but first uh, thank you for having me uh, it's a huge pleasure to be here around uh, such uh, such esteemed panelists um actually i have prepared a powerpoint presentation so i'll simply go with it please tell me if you see it i'm sharing the screen now hopefully it's working properly yes we see it all right just give me a second and i think i'll be able even to switch to the slides so um I just wanted to mention briefly who are we first just to present ourselves then to talk why why fintech in Bulgaria and um obviously to touch touch points on uh, what exactly do we have here as an ecosystem so uh without any further ado uh, once again I'm uh, the director of the Bulgarian Fintech Association it's an NGO a cluster organization representing uh 54 member 
members. Uh, actually, 53 of them are uh, fintech companies or companies somehow related to fintech. Uh, and our 54th uh, member is uh, actually Sofia University. That's how we we are now, we can pronounce now um, ourselves as a cluster organization combining in one place private, public uh, and academia uh, stakeholders. Um, actually, we are, actually, we are also a co-founder of the European Digital Finance Association, which is a fintech association of, in Europe uh, that represents 13 fintech associations across Europe and more than 1,000 fintech companies. And we are also an affiliate member to the International Financial uh, Education Network, to OECD. All right, just let me. Okay, uh, so that that's what we do uh, here. We basically bring together all key stakeholders in one place. We showcase what they have as solutions. We represent um, we represent these companies in front of um, all kinds of regulators as well as. Um, other other authorities, uh, whether it's on national or supranational level, um, meaning in front of the Bulgarian um, Bulgarian authorities or uh, the European ones, namely the European Commission, European Parliament, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also promote the fintech education in um, in our country and in our region by having a uh, um, collaboration with Sofia University in uh, a so-called fintech master degree. We also uh, lecture in different universities, actually in all Bulgarian universities that are uh, interested in uh, and teaching uh, finance. Uh, we are now having a um, a hope that we will some uh, like in the next couple of, uh, of weeks uh, have a new uh, new project on attracting Bulgarian diaspora, meaning that we will simply present what we have in front of Bulgarians that are outside of, of our country uh, to show them that uh, if they're not satisfied, if they're not happy living outside of uh, or, or abroad, uh, they simply can um, come back to their home country um, without uh, without um, giving up on their um, their professional life, just because in our country we have really nice examples of uh, of fintechs. Uh, but uh, actually, just a bit more about Bulgaria. Um, we are a um, EU member state since 2007, a NATO and World Trade Organization um, member member company, uh, sorry, member country. Um, and um, our business climate, I would say, is one of one of the most, uh, let's say, hospitable to um, to compare to all of our neighbors. Uh, we also we also have a currency that is fixed to the euro meaning that it is as stable as uh, the euro, which is uh, really nice, I would say. Um, but what is more important is uh, the conditions that we have in in regards to the personnel uh, that you can find here. And uh, namely, here we have really nice uh, quality of IT personnel. Uh, as you can see here, some, some metrics. We've been ranked 12th among the countries with the best developers in the world. And we are uh, first when it comes to uh, IT certified uh, specialists per capita. Um, and of course, when we're talking about uh, FinTech, we should mention that uh, another prerequisite uh, that is really valuable to having so many FinTechs is the fastest mobile internet connection. Just give me a second. Um, so I hope you now see me properly. <laughs> um, so the fastest mobile internet connection uh, here in, Uber, uh, in Europe is really helping us out a lot uh, when having mobile uh, applications on whether it's on a tablet or uh, on your phone. Uh, I mean, you can you can get the idea here. So who has already chosen us as uh, as a as a location to be i mean as a location for their um for their offices as you can see here uh, there are uh, some of the most and the biggest uh, fintechs uh, around the world um namely we have here bank 
pay safe Experian. Uh, we have Commerce Bank who came just recently in Bulgaria. We also have Uber Finance, another great example of uh, of a fintech uh, that has joined our ecosystem recently. Uh, we also have Crypto.com, uh, Leno, Setso, Tide. You just name it, and it's here. Why do we have it? Um, just like I said, the personal is the one uh, that is so, so important to us. Actually, we've been covered by many um, foreign media, many uh, foreign outlets that uh, has simply called our, uh, our country the Silicon Valley of the uh, SEE region is Southeastern Europe region. Um, and actually, our country has been ranked first among uh, the, the locations, the fintech locations um, that's, that are, let's say, the best in cost effectiveness. Uh, but um, we achieve this um, only because of, of what we have, actually, of, of the conditions and this personal and education that, that uh, we are more than proud of. Uh, first of all, we have... Um, 180,000 university students every single year. And uh, out of them, about uh, 8,000 are majoring computer sciences at any given time. Uh, mo in more than 30 private software schools and more than 50 uh, higher education institutions. Of course, the uh, last but not least is the English proficiency, which is pretty high. As you can see, we've been ranked 24, uh, 24th out of uh, 100 countries around the world. Um, and uh, when we're talking about fintech, uh, something really important for, for us is the fintech master degree that we have now for a second year in, uh, in the SOF University. Um, but about our ecosystem. Uh, we'll go through uh, really quickly through our uh, annual fintech report. Actually, that's that's the report that uh, shows off what we have. Uh, actually, what we had in 2020, we are now working on creating the new the newest version, the the one that will be the annual fintech report 2021 in mid October. Hopefully, it will be out so you can all download it and simply find um, the the key the key the key areas um, that that are bringing our uh, our fintech ecosystem so this is uh, this is what we found actually that's uh, keep in mind that's that's last year this is a mapping that we created together with uh, innovative sofia um, and this map mapping contains the most important parts of uh, of a fintech ecosystem namely the first one the upper part is all the fintech companies or as as many as we could could come up with. I mean, these are all the people that are here on the market working from Bulgaria, utilizing what we have as resources, and either going outside of the country um, and, and just um, comparing there with uh, with some uh, some other fintechs, or just working for solutions that are being um, marketized uh, here in our in our country in Bulgaria. As you can see, there are many segments uh, of this uh, of this fintech um, this fintech sphere, uh, and actually we cover pretty much all of them. As you can see, we have uh, crypto and blockchain people. We have rec tech companies. Um, the payments and billing sector, the, the segment actually is the is the biggest one with um, with the most representatives there. Uh, we also have lending, um, and uh, last but not least, we have um, another distinguished part. We call it IT development support for fintech. These are some companies that are working, let's say, scale focus that are working with uh, fintech companies, providing them solutions. But these solutions, they are not their main revenue source. Uh, they have many other um, things uh, in their queue. They have many other uh, businesses, many other markets, uh, but are working uh, in, in the fintech area as well. So we have listed them uh, out here as well because they're important in order to, to have what we have. Um, last but not least is the bottom part of this mapping, which represents our entrepreneurial ecosystem, the regulators, uh, the events and conferences that we have, the universities and IT academies that are uh, dealing with fintech in, in some way, uh, all the VC funds that are interested in fintech, uh, the digital and uh, innovative uh, co-working and maker spaces and so on and so forth. You can check out these uh, 
this mapping once again uh, on our website in the report section um, I do believe that it would be interesting to you so uh, the key parameters in 2021 what we have found uh, this year that we will now uh, put in the uh, in the newest version of uh, of any of fintech report first 131 fintech companies um, and once again uh, the leading subsector is the payments uh, payment seg segment um, on the right hand side you see this is the so-called flywheel it's a taxonomy created by university of cambridge that represents all the business models that that you could come up with when we are talking uh, about about fintechs. So on the right side, that's that's anything that you um, that that you can uh, think of uh, when when you mention uh, a fintech. Because there is this huge debate on what is fintech and what is not. Uh, in our association, we do apply all uh, the, this this metric, this, this taxonomy, uh, and we say that's that's the best uh, the best way to go forward to to explaining and to determining what is fintech and what's not. And it is really nice to say that we cover all these segments. Uh, they're part of of our ecosystem. These are uh, another key metrics uh, that we have. Um, the operating revenue in 2019 was uh, 605, uh, 650 million euros. Uh, that represents about 1% of our GDP. And the employees in the sector are about 8,000 in 2019. Uh, other key findings that we are really proud of is that uh, the salaries in this sector are much, much higher uh, than any other sector in Bulgaria. And uh, women are really well represented um, in our in our sector. Although it's, it's mainly related to IT, we do have about 50% of our employees uh, in the fintech sector are women, which is really nice, not only because it's a nice marketing, but also that it shows it shows that we we utilize the, the best of the of, of the potential that we have here. Um, of course, our banks uh, have to be mentioned here as well, because they're, they're, they're fastly catching up. Uh, we now see some fintech products coming out of the, the biggest Bulgarian banks, um, even even uh, fintech innovation hubs, which is something even better because they um, they they accelerates um, the creation of fintech uh, business models. Fintech investments uh, is another key um, part here, and it shows once again how important uh, fintechs are, and. Um, just to name uh, here uh, one specific that uh, one third of all VC funds, uh, VC inv investments in 2019 have been invested in, um, in in FinTech. And last but not least, this is uh, what we have as public sector. Uh, what is the public sector doing in that direction in, in supporting the fintech sector? First, it's about policy. The Ministry of Finance, they're, they're dealing with a financial literacy strategy that we uh, ourselves as an association, we um, lobby uh, in the best possible way to have uh, di the digitalization of the financial sector put in uh, the financial literacy strategy that is uh, uh, that is really aimed to, to produce the new uh, manuals uh, in schools. Uh, then we have the non-banking sector with the Financial Supervision Commission. There we have the Innovation Hub and the banking sector uh, with the Bulgarian National Bank uh, that, that have said that uh, we'll at some point have a regulatory sandbox. That's pretty much it from my side. If you're really uh, looking forward to investing in our country and in our region, I'm, I'm more to more than welcome. You're more than welcome to just pin me on LinkedIn, um, send me a mail, a, or, or just try to get in contact with me in every other possible way. Thank you so much once again for this. Thank you, Georgi. And uh, just in conclusion, this th that was a very comprehensive um, explanation about the ecosystem. Can we conclude that actually we have a, a good synergy between uh, regulators, the state authorities, the local ecosystem overall? I wouldn't go with the regulators, but uh, I would say that the public sector is working pretty closely with us. Um, still, the regulators, uh, just because they're independent to our Ministry of Finance, uh, they're a bit more conservative comparing to the Ministry of Finance itself. Uh, but it's just a matter of time. It's good that we see this interest. It's good that we see you guys uh, being part of this, uh, of that kind of events, just like uh, the Global Fintech uh, Festival. So 
it's uh, the way to go forward, I would say. Yep. Thank you, Georgi. And you actually mentioned something uh, interesting that one of our most solid points is the uh, the labor force, the people who are actually talented and very well prepared uh, to enter this space. And uh, today also we, with us, we have uh, Plamen, who is not only board member of uh, the outsourcing association that brought a lot of business to Bulgaria and helped them establish their offices here, but he's also chairman of the board of the company you mentioned earlier, Scale Focus, the company that actually provides service to fintech uh, companies in order to develop their products. And Plamen, you, from your experience in uh, so many years on the market now, what do you feel is the, why does the Bulgarian labor market stand out so well? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, now uh, I think, yeah, I unmuted myself successfully. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Maybe I will start, it's a very good question. I will start first with a few words around iBest, which I'm representing here. Uh, this is the Association for Innovation, Business Excellence Services and Technology. Uh, it's a business association of all big technology, software, and business services companies present with operations on the labor market here in Sofia and Bulgaria. As members, we have all local and international software companies, shared service centers, captive development and IT centers, many different flavors of substantial BPO operations in Sofia and inside the country. Our common topics, apart from local regulations, is focused on education, talent development, and expansion of this industry of knowledge inside the country, but also now also outside of the country. What I can say in addition to what Georgi said, actually the established ecosystem around FinTech is even much bigger and stronger. And if we take into account the developed talent pool and skills around the whole IT service and BPO industry over the past two decades of really go up history. So we have big international technology players present, uh, present on the technology labor market, which are IBM, VMware, SAP, EPAM. Also big technology and support operations of fintech companies like Paysafe, Experian, Summit and others. So historically, the education in Bulgaria was very strong in mathematics and software engineering. Also combined with extensive foreign language education. Uh, Georgi showed up in his presentation also what are the uh, university topics, but I mean, this, this was really the foundation back 30 years ago. And the presence, on top of the presence of those international players, reshaped the talent pool. And currently, we have very good wide set of technology skills available here in Sofia and Bulgaria. Uh, so, like software engineering and cloud computing. Uh, there is also quite a lot of domain experts now in fintech and banking. We have data analysts, we have big data processing skills, algorithmic engineering skills, which is also quite important for some of the fintech solutions. On top project and product management society, very active one. Uh, around the BPO, there is a very vast majority of customer experience skills, uh, also cybersecurity and network and security operations uh, skills. So it's, when we talk about the whole industry, it's a common pool of above 60,000 specialists in that industry with high-end project shaping skills, uh, uh, which combined with the local startup community and the investor ecosystem, these are the three key pillars, this in the industry to flourish in all these mentioned segments like trading, like payment processing, like blockchain, digital banking, and all others. So in Sofia and Bulgaria today, there is a very competitive talent pool in all the major disciplines, which are key ingredients for success of every fintech project. In 2021, we have a lot of new operation and development centers of fintech companies. Also, fintechs headquartered in Bulgaria and operating globally. We see a 30% growth from the last year report of the FinTech Association. So this is the trend. All the major players are increasing their operations and complementing more and more functions, also business functions, as the location is very competitive from cost to productivity perspective and access to talent. 
And what else besides the talent and the access to the cost effectiveness of, the, of this talent do you think is key for attracting investors? You mentioned that it's both academia and the first major players that came on board that developed that kind of talent. What else do you think Bulgaria and Sofia has to offer to those investors besides the talent? Uh, I think we have all the three major pillars because we have this bigger talent pool right now shaped by the whole the, the IT industry. Uh, we have the startup community and uh, we have also the uh, investment uh, uh, fund infrastructure which actually are uh, supporting the innovation and uh, the startup of new ideas which turn into companies which also uh, some of the companies are now successfully operating globally. Uh, I mean, apart from that, apart from that, uh, uh, there are government uh, uh, regulations and things around how uh, uh, we have to move further. Uh, but uh, together, all the communities, uh, the associations and the local uh, discussions are going, I think, in the right direction. Uh, yeah, at the moment there will be a shortage of talent, but the Bulgarian companies, what we see also in the association, uh, uh, they are quite well going also outside Sofia, but also outside of Bulgaria as well, and attracting the best talent from the whole Southeastern Europe. So this is also a process which is happening right now around the working from everywhere environment. So uh, this will more and more support uh, the growth of the industry here, which is not coincidental no. at all. Thank you, Plan. And you, you also now are uh, pointing to uh, something very important, which is the entrepreneurial and the investment ecosystem. And I want to... Uh, Pass the ball to Ivan Vasilev from our Bulgarian Startup Association and dig a little deeper into that. And Ivan, can you tell us more about uh, the success of the Bulgarian startup ecosystem and the actualized businesses? How are they managing to grow internationally? And what is it in the environment in Bulgaria and so forth that allows them to, to grow internationally? Sure. Uh, thank you, Gentry, and thank you for having me in this uh, great uh, discussion today and also great event. Um, a little, uh, a short intro about uh, BESCO, the Bulgarian Startup Association. Uh, we represent more than 500 uh, innovative and technology companies from small startups to large uh, technology and uh, technology enterprises. Uh, our main goal is to transform the economy uh, and base it on the industry with high added values. And uh, uh, and basically, this is what we are doing to, together with. Uh, and the, the politician in Bulgaria. Thank you, Gencho, for your openness and, the, uh, and uh, your role in uh, Sofia municipality uh, to listen to our ideas and to, to working uh, and working together to achieve more uh, through technology. And also, would like to thank uh, Bolgovest as a member of Parliament. Uh, thanks to thanks to Bolgovest, we created uh, for first time in Bulgaria the Commission for Digitalization, uh, e-government, and IT ICT in Bulgaria which is uh, a huge step uh, for uh, prioritizing uh, the, the topic of technology, topic of innovation. Uh, as uh, Plamen and uh, Georgi mentioned, uh, our ecosystem is growing fast. Uh, we have all the necessity uh, pillars in, in the ecosystem. We have the talent, we have um, the entrepreneurial spirit, we have the VC funds who invest in uh, startups, and we also have the educational program, which uh, helps uh, the startups to grow. Directly to your question, uh, I, I would like to point out that uh, uh, our ecosystem here in Sofia is really live and uh, soon we expect to have our first unicorn startup. Uh, I mean, it's a matter of months, not years uh, now. So uh, it's, um, it's a fruit of all these efforts of uh, you and also all the uh, uh, participants in this ecosystem. Um, so yeah, basically Bulgaria and Sofia is a great place uh, to start your business uh, and to to grow it. Uh, we as association have uh, three main topics in which we want to uh, to help the startup ecosystem grow even even further. Uh, the, the the three main pillars are access to talent, access to capital, and ease of doing business. Uh, 
uh, we think that uh, there is a need in a, uh, there is need uh, in, in terms of legislation to be changed in order to attract more talent. And I'm happy to share with uh, the audience that uh, Bulgaria uh, is uh, is starting to start a visa process, which is um, especially dedicated to foreign entrepreneurs to come easily in Bulgaria to start their own business, to live here in Bulgaria, and to grow this business and make it worldwide success. So I would like to invite all the uh, all, all members of the audience who are um, who are outside European Union to to take a look at our startup visa. Uh, it will be it will be live soon. Actually, in, in uh, one or two weeks, it will be accessible from the uh, website of the Ministry of Economy, and everybody can uh, uh, can apply and uh, can can come to Bulgaria and experience uh, this uh, whole ecosystem uh, from uh, first hand. Thank you, Ivan. And your efforts as an association have been really great and really helping the government nationally and locally to um, build on policies that uh, help and involve innovative potential. And you mentioned uh, something very interesting that uh, you, together with uh, Blagoves here, you have been uh, dr the driving force behind creating this committee for digitalization. Blago, can you share a bit more about what is the goal, what were the goals of the committee and how it has um, played out in the last parliament and uh, what were the major decisions that are driving the innovation and the startup ecosystem and the fintech forward? Hello, everyone from me as well. And uh, thanks for being here today. So, um, the main idea of the committee and of the creation of the committee was actually to first of all put the priority of uh, developing the sector further, uh, as a government perspective also, um, in, into the uh, work of the day to day work of the government because there is many regulations that need to be changed so that uh, we can be up to date and we can be um, let's say more competitive and more open uh, to, to the um, options and future that we uh, see ahead uh, one of the main things that um, uh, we have as a goal in in the committee is actually to um, make it easier doing business uh, in the IT sector because we know there's many things that change from a, a daily perspective. Uh, we um, need more um, e-government solutions and um, el electronic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, so, so that you don't need to go somewhere to, to get the work done. And uh, the faster we move on to that, uh, the better it will be uh, as an uh, infrastructure for uh, new companies to come in. Um, we also uh, see a, a big potential in working with the university and the education system, because that's something that, uh, uh, based on what we are seeing as uh, experience from the companies that are in Bulgaria, uh, if we apply that also to the university, so that uh, as also the colleague said, uh, Im uh, implement the basics uh, into the education system from an even earlier age, then we will be also well set with the next generation of workers and staffing that uh, we will need to provide in order to increase um, our value as a hub. Uh, we've also focused on uh, something that's uh, come up now with the st Startup Nation standard. Bulgaria signed up uh, to comply to the standard within the next two years. Part of that is also the startup visa, but also many more things like the uh, sandboxes that need to be created, um, openness and one-stop shop for opening new businesses, uh, and in general, just having a clean uh, process in how things work, so that uh, regardless of um, from, from where uh, the investment comes in or from where the R&D comes in, uh, we're set to go and uh, we're able to provide the services to those companies. Um, one thing also worth mentioning is um, that engaging the government uh, helps in that regard as well because in terms of processes, there's many things that uh, we can optimize so that uh, it's easier not only for businesses, but it's also easier for the workers uh, to complete their jobs and to be more open to jobs so that uh, we can also utilize them more fully. Okay, so as you said, we have started a really large-scale initiative into facilitating easier access for companies, for investors. Uh, how long do you feel it will take before we're completely ready and be the leader in Europe into innovation? The, all those policies that have started, 
what what is the timeline for for achieving the uh, all the markers of the startup nation standards well the timeline is two years that we've set so um I would not only go to those markers, I would go uh, rather on a more strategic level and say that uh, we have a solid foundation for IT and we're positioned also as a regional uh, leader in uh, many of the uh, subsectors of, of the IT sector. Uh, what we need to focus on is first more products and more, um, let's say, um, success stories that we can share because there's many of those which are not shared. So... Um, they are not known, and when they are not known, it's not that easy uh, to market also Bulgaria as a brand. And here also the government can help because uh, if also with the international partners that we have, we share all the experience we've got, we share what we are planning, we share what we are doing because in um, the many aspects we are uh, creating innovative solutions that are um, considered and used all over the world. It's just not uh, known that they are made in Bulgaria. So um, the more we focus also on R&D, we focus on education, um, and we set a proper roadmap during the, I would say, uh, from a perspective in the next five to ten years, so that we know what we can expect, what we can plan, and how we can implement that, uh, I think uh, we can only grow because mm -hmm. the potential is there, and we have that. So we can firmly say that uh, nationwide and parliament, uh, in including are putting focus into the industry in all those uh, sectors of deep technologies. And uh, we can commit that if investors come, we will make it easier and easier for them to operate and to have business in Bulgaria. Definitely, yeah. So uh, we're open to that. We're focused on that and we're prepared to do that uh, and pre prepared also to partner with them because regardless if someone wants to be an investor, someone wants to uh, come here to work or someone wants to... Um, implement his ideas or just share his ideas in a sandbox and try them out, uh, we are here. So, and uh, Sophie is also a clean example of that uh, with most of the sector stationed here and uh, also uh, I would say day to day uh, we see more and more innovative solutions coming in. So, um, there, there's many things to see and there's uh, uh, many things that uh, lie ahead of the, uh, the fintech sector as well as the, as well as the IT sector in both. Yes, and the ongoing amendment of legislation alongside that is really key to make sure that the conditions are proper. And the young, everyone is talking about education. Like Plum and Ivan, Blago, everyone is talking about how important educating the talent here is and how Sofia University actually is has been. Hello, do you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, let me take it from there because I, I know where, where the introduction was going to go, in which direction. So I was, I'm very happy and thank you for the invitation to the Deputy Mayor, Mr. Kerezov and Innovative Sofia to present uh, Sofia University as actually, as you all mentioned, the link between business uh, regulators, uh, government, and also the labor force. And Sofia University has, uh, well, more than 100 years of history of providing uh, trained professionals for all kinds of industries. And right now, of course, with, with this uh, quickly changing environment, our task, task is to train uh, financial professionals for the finance of the future. And also a very important point is to uh, part of our job is to train government officials to get up to speed with the new trends. And also we provide platform for companies, not only with our student job fairs, but also with uh, we help them to train their personnel, as I said. And we also with the new with the change of regulation, we allow professionals to teach at universities. And the Faculty of Economics and Business Administration has had itself more than 20 years of history of uh, teaching courses in digitalization. Uh, we have many courses taught in English. Our students enter the faculty with a foreign language, mostly English. Uh, most of them speak more than two foreign languages. We have 
uh, several master programs and bachelor programs fully in English. 10% of our faculty is international. We have a vibrant student environment and we try to nurture entrepreneurial spirit as, as much as possible. We uh, organize or we allow students to organize pitching sessions where they can uh, present their ideas at monthly basis. Right now it's a bit slowed down because of the uh, virus, but we will be restarting them very soon, I hope. Uh, we also have even student startups that are supported by the faculty with working spaces. And as I said, we try to support the local ecosystem as, as much as possible. Uh, one of the uh, latest examples of this support and communication with the ecosystem is something that Georgi already mentioned, the master's program in FinTech. And it, it, it started in 2020, and there has been uh, an amazing support by the, by, by the Bulgarian FinTech Association with le guest lecturers, facilities, also a marketing of the program. And the program itself has been a, a, a great success, not only by the uh, reviews of students and the members of the FinTech Association, but also uh, quantitatively in terms of numbers very well with, in the first year we became right away the biggest master's program in uh, in the faculty uh, we had we had intake of 45 people last year we will have more than 40 this year so we are trying to build a critical mass of trained and retrained professionals as i said for the future of finance we don't uh, in, not only we teach not only to economists, but also we retrain engineers, lawyers, we even have linguists that are important for machine learning. And uh, it's a, an executive type program. So it's uh, after 6 p.m. Uh, it, we have had not only, uh, we have had heads of departments, not only teaching uh, in big banks, not only teaching in our program, but, but also taking part of the program. So they are studying in the program. As I mentioned, we have employees uh, we, uh, from government agencies that want to keep up to speed with fintech developments. We have courses in fintech and e-banking, blockchain and cryptocurrencies, machine learning and AI applications to business and finance. Also, we teach programming languages. As I said, it's been a great success. Right now, it's not fully in English, but we aim to do it, uh, to uh, convert it in English and to make it fully digital. And the course I teach is an introduction to, to FinTech. So uh, I'm trying to wrap, uh, to cover as many topics as possible. And I've modeled it after uh, best examples at Oxford, uh, Stanford, and Harvard. Uh, it's called FinTech and e-banking. So we, I, I show the evolution of fintechs, all kinds, all types, payments, peer-to-peer -peer lending, blockchain applications, regulating fintech, introduction to AI and ML. All those topics are then covered in, in more advanced courses in the master's programs that we teach. And uh, the thing I'm most excited uh, uh, is the hackathon that we finished the course with. Uh, it was... Uh, with the help, of course, with the huge help of the FinTech Association. And uh, we managed to find support by the European Commission, by the Ministry of Finance, also big tech and uh, FinTech conglomerates like IBM, Visa, MasterCard, PaySafe. Uh, the students or the participants, it was open to everyone that had FinTech idea. Uh, they could solve a case study given by the members of the FinTech Association or they could set up their own FinTech. And we had uh, more than 70 participants, two winners with exciting ideas. The most valuable thing to me were, were the workshops that we uh, gave free of charge, uh, where we taught how uh, the young entrepreneurs could build a successful FinTech startup, starting from the idea for uh, the pitch deck, uh, ending with the user interface and financing. So I'm I'm very excited to be in this well in the middle of, of all this 
activity and we are looking forward to work uh, to continue working with the business and with the government to uh, promote the field and to support it in any way possible thank you dion it is uh, apparent that the academia has a very strong role and everyone is mentioning it as an important partner and uh, yeah we actually mentioned earlier that there is could be a, even a shortage of talent besides uh, despite all the all the efforts uh, is there something else besides the educational courses itself that the universities are now doing to to overcome that issue that we might have talent shortage going forward because we are now at a forum where uh, a lot of people international can see that and they can see that we are open to also attracting talent not just investors when we do uh, from academic perspective is there something else that they can count on when they come here so uh one of the things that was already mentioned was that we are uh, i uh, in person georgi as well we work on the uh, financial education strategy and that will provide yeah. the knowledge about the all the new d- digital technologies and uh, financial technologies starting from ve- a very early age the s- a second thing is uh what i also mentioned the retraining of specialists we we are open to to provide training right now with the di- digitalization we are open to provide training at any place uh wh- once we have the the full body of courses and the support of the sector uh so uh obviously there there is there is still a shortage uh, of of talent we are trying to build it quickly there is a second masters program right now targeted at uh, artificial intelligence in business and finance that there are a lot of synergies and courses right now with that program we are at uh, more than 65 70 people at the moment uh, retraining and training there are also other initiatives that i also participate in outside of academia we are also communicating with other universities for instance the uh, academy of the ministry of in, uh, inferior in interior sorry interior uh and they are more interested in uh, com- uh compliance uh cyber crime uh money laundering but uh, i find it very uh Uh, a, a, a very good sign that uh, also the public uh, universities and sectors and other parts of of the of the landscape are uh, looking to to yes. improve their skills and yeah. and this also comes to comes to show that we are also looking for uh, for the uh, at the situation from the safe side we need, we have to make sure that the technologies are safe and that people uh, people's data and people's money because we're talking about fintech is well protected here as well and now uh, just to to recap it is obvious that we have uh, national support for the fintech sector here we have commitment for legislative amendments if needed uh, you know that i'm very well very committed from the municipality perspective to provide conditions that businesses can uh, grow and develop here we have great ecosystem from the startup perspective and from the investors perspective uh, coming forward and uh, academia all this combined and joined together what kind of results has this produced so far plamen what would be uh, let's say a good example for a fintech uh, company that has had great success here from bulgaria interesting question i think uh, the sector is flourishing flourishing and uh, actually booming because it's the next stage of development which is uh, has to come uh, what we also see is, as a software company for example is the increase Uh, of the number of projects uh, from our perspective uh, in the software sector in 2019 our revenue it was 7% from fintech uh, we typically work for exports uh, not for bulgarian fintechs in 2020 it came to 10% and in 2021 it will be uh, above 20% and this is only one software company Uh, there are another 50 plus 
software companies which are uh, operating uh, in Bulgaria for exports. Uh, and the variety of the projects uh, is actually pretty big. I mean, this year we have started, for example, a project fully digital, new, completely digital bank for the Middle East. Or precious metal trading with certifications based on blockchain. Uh, liquid asset management with uh, uh, and insurance trading based on blockchain. I, I mean, you can extrapolate what also the other software sector is doing. And this is bringing up skills, bringing up innovation ideas, which then feeds up the startup ecosystem and the investment community. And I, I think uh, uh, in the very close future, we will see more and more innovation because of those three pillars. Uh, and uh, currently, I don't have a name uh, uh, for a very successful startup. Maybe uh, Ivan from Besco, you can you can give uh, uh, that kind of name. Yeah, sure. Uh, one uh, company came came to my mind when you were talking about a successful startup from Bulgaria. It's definitely Payho. They recently got uh, invested investment. Uh, uh, at a sure, really high actually, we use them. We use them yeah. as a payment provider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have our successful uh, successful stories uh, definitely. And uh, what I want also to add is that uh, if our if uh, from our audience there are entrepreneurs, there is a fast track from them for them to come to Bulgaria, start a visa. If they're investors, uh, we have a lot of uh, startups who are looking for investment we, and uh, if they're also entrepreneurs with us uh, with us, and uh, they have startup we have uh, a lot of investors even here in Bulgaria we have some VC funds who are uh, specially invested uh, in, in uh, fintech sector uh, we also have um, in some educational programs in the other VCs who are helping the startups to grow so Bulgaria and Sofia is really a nice place uh, on the fintech map and uh, a place really considering uh, when you're talking about the future uh, successful companies in the fint fintech sector. Ivan, can you ex expand a bit more on the VC side? So, so far, uh, we can come to the conclusion that Bulgaria is an attractive place both for talent and for uh, investors, also for startups, of course. But now you're, and by the way, Plamen also mentioned for services. Fintech companies can come and use the mm -hmm. IT ecosystem to, to provide service for them to develop their products. But now you also mentioned that we have a lot of money here as well, yeah. the, the VC fund. Uh, yeah. do, is it Would it be required, let's say, for a Bulgarian VC fund, if they want to invest in a company, let's say, from in a startup from India, do they need to be relocated here in Bulgaria or you, or you can do the... Deals yeah, terms. they need they need to establish a company uh, registered in Bulgaria. Uh, those are the uh, the requirements of the uh, funds who receive uh, money from the fund of funds, uh, which are basically uh, EU money. But uh, we have also some private uh, VC funds. Uh, for them, there is no, uh, no no need to establish a Bulgarian company. They can invest uh, in a co company registered anywhere in the world. So it depends really on the situation and the exact uh, case of the company. So in, as, as you mentioned, yes, in Bulgaria, we have uh, a lot of money and uh, most of them are uh, in the fintech sector, uh, AI, blockchain. Um, so uh, I think uh, if, if the idea is good, uh, there are a lot of money in Bulgaria right now uh, and, uh, and a lot of potential to invest uh, in those uh, good ideas. Okay, so let's say that uh, if there is a small startup somewhere uh, in the re in the region of uh, Southeast Asia, for example, and they need funding and they want to expand in the European market, uh, they can contact any of the organizations here and we sure. can help them set them up with a Bulgarian office, support them with talent, support them with legislation and allow them to, through a Bulgarian entity, to actually enter the European market. Sure, sure, that's correct, yes. And we are, we are more than welcome to do that that uh, this is really a great message for all of us, uh, for all the people watching uh, watching today. Uh, and do, can you just share with us what, what is uh, the, do you have an idea of what is the volume of investments currently available? I cannot uh, mention an exact figure, uh, but uh, I know for sure that uh, Front of Funds, which is a publicly owned fund, uh, should uh, invest more than 1.2 billion in the upcoming years in uh, startups here in Bulgaria. 
1.2 billion yes. euros. Yes. Yeah. At least. At, at least. least. Those are the, only the public money. I know for sure that there are a lot of uh, uh, private investor, uh, private investment funds, VC funds, uh, and uh, the amount is even bigger. Great. So maybe we can open the floor now for, for a short Q&A. And I would invite everyone watching to uh, simply share their questions into the uh, into the chat panel on the right hand side uh, of your screen. And uh, in the meantime, while, while we get some questions to, to wrap up, uh, I would like to to ask Plamen, can you uh, expand a little bit on the services that the IT ecosystem actually provides to fintech companies here? Or you mentioned that you actually export also. Let, if there is a large companies abroad that want to develop products, how can they reach you and what kind of capacity can they count on in the companies here? Uh, yeah, I mean, the software sector, uh, there are quite a lot of projects which are international projects and developed in Bulgaria, which is one of the skill, skill creation uh, moment, moments which are feeling the ecosystems. And uh, what I said initially, the capacity, it started from hardcore software engineering, uh, but uh, it developed a lot into product project management, uh, domain skills because all of this because of this ecosystem collaboration. So typically, the biggest Bulgarian export companies right now are really dealing with uh, uh, or helping global enterprises uh, uh, to innovate or uh, create their next version of uh, software. So. Uh, this is one of the type of the services. Uh, what we also see from the BPO space, uh, there is quite a lot of skills uh, right now and proficiency in uh, uh, customer uh, customer experience and uh, 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 support, uh, especially for the European and US customers, uh, which is also uh, very adjacent part, important part when you when you have to do a fintech operation. And uh, last but not least, uh, we see quite a lot of uh, good development of the skills for uh, cyber security, uh, uh, network and uh, security operational control centers, which actually is very important now in the digital world when a fintech has to uh, uh, rise up uh, and uh, all this combined uh, is uh, uh, having creating a very good playground a company to source most of the critical talent from uh, uh, one location or nearby locations uh, uh, which actually also explains why is the rise up of the fintech uh, sector so uh, so quick in the last few years mm -hmm. great and uh maybe to wrap it up if we have an audience that is uh, interested in coming here this is a question to all of you guys do you feel it is easy to start a business in bulgaria and what kind of support is being offered to entrepreneurs uh, starting off uh, from from scratch Maybe I can jump in. Uh, as I mentioned, yeah, Bulgaria and, and Sofia are a great place to start uh, a, a, a technology business, innovative business. Yes, we have challenges, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, we also have uh, all key players in the ecosystem who are willing to help uh, and guide everybody who wants to establish a company in Bulgaria. Uh, we have the education, we have the talent, uh, we also have uh, the VC funds, we have uh, good examples uh, who can share their experience. And also we have the openness uh, from the government and uh, municipalities to help uh, the best possible way in order to, to, to grow the, the companies with uh, high potential. So um, please consider Bulgaria and Sofia as, uh, as a business destination and uh, we are here and we're ready for, to help you. What I can ask actually, so Bulgaria is not a big consumer territory, 
uh, I mean, uh, typically uh, what we see as examples that fintech companies are either using Bulgarian companies or using the Bulgarian talent in order to create their uh, uh, global impact. So uh, market-wise is not a big tech, but talent-wise and uh, uh, ecosystem-wise, it's uh, uh, one of the hottest area to initially bootstrap quickly. And just to be as pragmatic as possible, uh, I want to just uh, finish up with Blago because we mentioned that one-stop shop for starting a business in Bulgaria that is into the roadmap for the uh, digital transformation also on national level. Can you just share with us uh, what would that look like, this one-stop shop for setting up a technology business? Well, um, first of all, it's... Um... If you're an aspiring startup or entrepreneur, first you need to be able to fo- find all the relevant information about the administrative requirements and uh, opportunities or funding opportunities in one place. Um, then uh, all the legal documentation and uh, uh, creation of the of the company should be able to be again done via one place and uh, then in in a quick. Um, uh, manner so that you don't need to wait uh, in one institution, then collect the documents, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next, so that uh, everything can be uh, done preferably also online with uh, uh, electronic authentication uh, and as fast as possible. So at first we guarantee the, uh, the data security, we guarantee everything is done in one place so that uh, nothing gets lost, which uh, could also happen if it's uh, uh, split via all the different administrations. And then also based on the internal registers, uh, all the information is then spread also to, to the um, relevant sector. So if you are want to apply for funding, for example, they already ha- have your documentation, so you don't need to, again, request that, get that, and uh, uh, continue from there. So uh, it will be way easier to uh, maintain a business, uh, regardless if it's a smaller one, if it's an um, entity coming in from, from abroad, uh, and then also um, start directly doing business with that instead of waiting uh, for it to be created first. Great. Thank you, Blago. And thank you, everyone, for t- today's panel. It, I think it has been really useful just to understand what the ecosystem cur- of fintech currently uh, is standing on, uh, what are the uh, educational framework that uh, we have prepared the talent based upon, how is the business set up, how is the legislation set up, and what are the plans going forward to be able to create Bulgarian Sofia really the leader in uh, fintech and digital innovation for uh, for our region. I hope it has been useful to all our viewers and our guests today. And uh, we're all looking forward and we're open to, to start a dialogue with partners worldwide and to make sure we provide support, we provide partnership, and we provide proper conditions to work together both here and internationally. Thank you all and uh, have a great day. Uh, in the other modules and the other panels and hope you had really really good value out of out of this today thank you thank you mr karazov and thank you to all the panel members for sharing their insights on the bulgarian ecosystem of the digital aspect of fintech i would also like to thank our engaging audience for continuously engaging with us with their queries and their comments on that note i would like also like to thank our, our sponsors and partners, Razorpay, Amazon Pay, WhatsApp, in association with Google Pay, Open Financial Technologies, and Cash Free Payments. Once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking out your time, and thank you for the esteemed panel for their insights. Thank you so much. Have a, have a, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.